Welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is Brooklyn. Let's continue. Hello, I'm Nia. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set, unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. She doesn't let it show. But there's anger in there. She doesn't like jewelers. Thinks they're a mob. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedro dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about a dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. During daytime, there are usually those kids, and lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. She nods. Anything else, officer? 
We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Play Sounds, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? All oh, right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. And then there is me. <sighs> I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. Malignant entity? What does that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. <laughs> so I'm the Grand Dragon in the cave. Might I ask what supports this claim? Oh my, I've revealed myself. You better call the exorcists. Of course, how convenient. Well, if you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. Pleasance needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies, you will make sense of the situation. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Rats scuttle in the dark rooms under the abandoned blow dryers and dusty mannequins. Cobwebs cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club. A community project created to steer at risk use away from drugs and crime. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. 
A kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. You should have known it. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. What does she mean to get off on it? Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. But what drugs exactly? He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. At least it had some spark to it. Most young designers just combine lace with leather and call it original. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. The usual, I imagine that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be 
chronically liberal with their schedules. The usual, they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Well, I did hear them talking at times. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, especially if you've been drinking. Still, not everyone is going to make it. That's the nature of the game. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes, like snowfall. Anything else? Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. There was really just one, and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Fritta does the same thing. Employing silky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. And they already had the bear. The bear. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents apiece, out of regular fridges. You did what? Ugh, oh, of course they left it plugged in. Even in death, the bear is costing them money. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherian. Scary, but cool. Megatherian, a mega wild beast. It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. A wise and noble beast, guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. Do you? Well, good luck keeping it under control. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low-hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion.
That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. Right, it used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Lipstream SEA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsons from the bookstore. Oh, right. But did this person say anything? Tricentennial Electrics? It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. Pranks can be eerie. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. Sure, I'm listening. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work. Sure, I'm listening. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. What do you mean by cursed? All right. How about I surprise you? Come back in eight hours with seven real, and I'll give you your cursed die. Great. See you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Didn't we already talk about this? What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. This doesn't make any sense. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? Hmm. You're right, I should take a trip to the roof once the snow is gone. Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. Do you know what this is? It's a morning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. 
I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> it wasn't just the jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. But anyway... Thanks for sharing your theories, officer. I'm listening. Good. Barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Hey, but you're still in a ghost house. What if someone heard this? What if they know you're here? Good technique. the books there may be teachings in them a novelty dice maker well spit it out why does she need the dice for some kind of sorcery sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep i don't understand if it's not her then where is the source of the doom how did she explain the curse before you say anything ask yourself is the woman really able to withstand the truth? Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. Hmm. Too many inconsistencies. What kind of talk is that? Yes, because her business consists of the psychic leech that's been feeding the curse. I see that you've fallen for her manipulation, Detective. The investigation is over. I just hope that you haven't made anything worse by going in there. 
Thank you for nothing. Please do buy some books or be on your way. Well, total psychic collapse between you two right now. Anger and loneliness keep this woman moving through the waking hours. Your little words are no match for it. I am sorry we had to disappoint you, ma'am. Can we go now? The shop around you feels ancient suddenly, damp and saturated by the coastal air. The books are rotting. A great cold lives here. And there, too. 1,200 meters away on the urban coast, the dark shape of a church is reflected on the water, calling. Knocked him out good, like the Flying Desperado. It's that really cool Flying Desperado spin kick you did, Boyadero. Often performed by the most hard-bodied Boyaderos on the steps. So, what's on your mind this time? All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. It really, really doesn't. Let's turn our attention elsewhere and move on. This is the Night Watchman's booth. You're back before the cargo container. desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. 
You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair is incredibly uncomfortable. Fortunately, your ass is made of iron, and the chair is made of wood. Iron beats wood. You manage not to shift around too much. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain... Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Don't mention it, but also don't forget it. I'm just kidding, of course. Is he? Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but... All you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Officer. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Mr. Dubois he keeps repeating? What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. 
Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colours, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy. But I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? And gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. 
You call me Everhart, I call you Harry. My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know, Dubois might be his name. You need to confirm this. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. No, I'm really, really not. You are Harry. And I can work with you, Harry. Now, what else can I do for you? Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. A bright shining star in the drab law enforcement sky, outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm gonna help you shine. I'm gonna put you on all the big stages, your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. The giant neon sign reading, Harry Dubois, hanging from the Kavalsun crane, can be seen all the way to Jamrock. Somewhere in Mirova, a beautiful woman sees the bright glow on the horizon and says to herself, Oh my God, I shouldn't have left him. Everard's large hands are covering the folder, but I'm sure it's not that bad. At worst, he has an old RCM folder, and I very much doubt even that. Harry, I just know the things that matter to our friendship. And I want you to feel free to ask me about those things. Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for Union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you, we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. 
You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here, and he has a little dead body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Please extend him this courtesy. You can find Luke down at the gates, but you already knew that. Anyway, he's going to help you, now that he's back on his feet. I don't know what that means, Harry, but I love it. <laughs> I love your initiative. Knowing you're out there keeping things running lets me focus on the big picture stuff. Don't even tell me what was going on. Alcoholic brew, stronger, stopped it, strike. I'm just going to let you surprise me, Harry. Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry, you spin kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? Don't worry, Harry. Between you and me, I'm not a huge fan of his race thing, but the Union did not get where we are today by frowning on eccentricity. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree and with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry, I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. 
Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Evrat doesn't mind. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. Let's hear it, Harry. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Mister, I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Sure, mister. Absolutely. I'm all... Do not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. Our personal dynamic has changed. A little. He means very little. So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're so noble, Measure Head. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. 
That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the Union's side. Yes. That is precisely what it means, Homunculus. This is not going to happen any other way. This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. He's fine. Goodbye. Return to your degeneracy. Okay guys, this I'm gonna leave it right here. Thank you guys for watching. More to come later.